temperature scales and conversions. All right, another fundamental quality in science is temperature. And we haven't talked much about temperature so far. It's basically a measure of the average amount of energy of motion or kinetic energy in a system. And temperatures are expressed using scales uh, that use units called degrees. I'm sure you've heard of this. So degrees Fahrenheit, for instance. Uh, there are several temperature scales in use. Uh, science uses two of them, and uh, the Fahrenheit scale is commonly used in the United States. And so we discuss uh, degrees Fahrenheit when we talk about temperature in this country. But um, one thing to keep in mind, uh, on this scale, the freezing point of liquid water is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and the boiling point of water, and that's the temperature at which the liquid water turns to steam, is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is useful to memorize these quantities if you haven't already. Um, and then we'll talk about similar points uh, for the other two temperature scales as we go along. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, other temperature scales exist, and these are the ones that uh, science uses and also much of the rest of the world. The first is the Celsius scale, and that is symbolized by degree C. And we say degree Celsius, and a lot of times you'll hear degree C. Um, and basically, the, on this temperature scale, zero degrees is the freezing point of water, and 100 degrees is the boiling point of water. And that Celsius scale is divided into 100 divisions between these two landmarks, and then it's extended higher and lower than that. Um, so there are two conversions between the Fahrenheit and Celsius scales, and as you can see, they're not the the simplest, easiest thing to use, but they're not bad once you get used to it, once you get a little bit of practice. Uh, to go to degree C from Fahrenheit, you want to take your Fahrenheit temperature, subtract off 32 degrees, and then multiply it by the fraction 5 divided by 9. Okay. Um, if you want to go to Fahrenheit from Celsius, you're going to take your degree Celsius, multiply it by 9 divided by 5, so the other way around, and then you're going to add 32 degrees. All right, so let's do a little uh, conversion here, a little practice. So 98.6, that's the normal human body temperature, and we want to convert that to degrees Celsius, and right now it's in Fahrenheit. So we're going to use the conversion factor that gives us degrees Celsius. So we're going to take our degrees Fahrenheit right here, we're going to plug that in, we're going to subtract off 32, we're going to multiply by 5 divided by 9, so 98.6 divided by 32 is going to give us 66.6, going to multiply it by 5 divided by 9, or 5 ninths, and we're going to end up with 37.0 degrees C. And again, 3 sig figs, 3 sig figs, and in the conversions, those are considered exact numbers, so we're not going to count those for, um, for significant figures. All right, so let's go the other way around. Uh, we have 25 degrees C, and what is that in degrees Fahrenheit? So we're going to use the other equations. We're going to plug in degree C here, and we're going to multiply it by 9 fifths. We're going to add on 32, so we're going to get 45 plus 32, and that's going to give us 77.0 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, another uh, temperature scale very commonly used in uh, chemistry and lots of other sciences is the Kelvin. And, um, and one thing to keep in mind about Kelvin, just for the future, I'm just putting this in your head, is when we talk about gas laws, the temperature that we use is always going to be in Kelvin. So it has to be for gas laws. That's just my plug for later on in the course. Um, but this is the SI unit for temperature. Now, the Kelvin temperature scale uses degrees that are the exact same unit size as the Celsius degree. Uh, but the numerical scale has been shifted up by 273.15 units. So uh, let's take a look at these uh, conversions, um, and then it'll give you, you know, a, a more clear uh, example of what we mean. So if we want to go from degree C to Kelvin, then basically well, all we're going to do is take our degree C, and we're going to add 273.15 to it, okay? If we want to go the other way around and get degree C, we're going to uh, put in our Kelvins and we're going to subtract off 273.15. Now, most of the time it's acceptable to just use 273 instead of 273.15. 
um, especially in this class. But it's going to depend on, um, you know, on the accuracy that you need for your problem. Okay, um, another little interesting thing is that the Kelvin scale doesn't use the word degrees. So we don't say, we say 295K or 295 Kelvin, but we don't say 295 degrees Kelvin. Okay, so there's no degrees in Kelvin. Um, and one of the reasons why, well, the reason why the Kelvin scale is defined the way it is, is that there is a minimum possible temperature called absolute zero. And so basically, at absolute zero, that is the bottom of the Kelvin scale. So zero Kelvin is absolute zero, and then the temperature is counted up from there. So instead of using the freezing point of water as a baseline, it's going to use absolute zero and count up from there. And as I mentioned, science uses the Celsius and Kelvin temperature scales exclusively, not Fahrenheit at all. All right, so here's just a few uh, pictures of thermometers that are just comparing. So you can see 32 degrees C, uh, that's the freezing point of water, zero degrees C uh, for Celsius, 273K uh, for uh, Kelvin, and absolute zero is zero Kelvin, which we already discussed. It's negative 273 degrees Celsius, negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, boiling point of water, so 212 Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, 373 Kelvin. Okay, so um, so that just gives you kind of a, a pictorial way to relate those different quantities. All right, so let's put it all together now. So we have a normal room temperature and it's 72.0 degrees Fahrenheit. We want to know the temperature of that room in degrees Celsius and also in Kelvin. So First, we're going to use the formula to determine the temperature in degrees Celsius. So let's pick out that formula. We're going to plug in our uh, degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to subtract off uh, 32, multiply it by 5 divided by 9. And when we're done with that, we're going to end up with 22.2 degrees C, so degrees Celsius. Now, we can take that temperature in Celsius and plug it in to the Kelvin conversion fa um, equation to get Kelvins from that. So we have 22.2 degrees C, we're going to add on 273.15, we'll get 295.4 Kelvin, and, um, and so we have three significant figures up here, four right here, that's not correct, we need to cut it down. Four is less than five, so we're going to round down, so we're going to end up at 295 Kelvin. All right, so just in summary, chemistry uses uh, Celsius and Kelvin scales to express temperatures. Um, the temperature on the Kelvin scale is the Celsius temperature plus 273.15, and the minimum possible temperature is absolute zero, and that's zero K on the Kelvin scale. So you really want to make sure you can practice converting temperatures between all three temperature scales, but especially you need to be able to easily convert from Celsius to Kelvins and vice versa, just consistently. So make sure you can do that very, very easily.